Hello everybody, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineer and this episode is going to be part four of the Superfly 2 build. Here you can see where we've gotten to at this point and in this episode this is going to be a big one because we are going to install the rear suspension. I have only designed it. I have never actually test fit anything with the, with the new parts, so this is a first for me. Speaking of the new parts, let's take a look at what we have. I did pull them all off the, uh, the sprue here. So let's begin. We do have a left and a a right suspension arm. Now the beauty of this is that the left and the right are both the same. So you are more than welcome to, if one of these is damaged or breaks, you don't have to buy a left or a right, they're both the same. The rear hub carriers do come together. However, you have a few options. These are the 1.5 degree versions. And you're gonna see that the, the 1.5 always points toward the front of the vehicle. So there is a left and a right here. A zero degree and a three degree are also available. This is the main support structure that goes at the rear of the car. These two guys are the left and the right A-arm mounts as well as uh, substructures for the entire rear suspension system. And as you can see, I have given this suspension a name. It is the Ampro Omega. Uh, a couple reasons why I called it the Omega. This was my my final major design for the Hornet. Therefore, since Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet, and more importantly, you can see I have five letters that ends with a, well, an O. So I needed five letters that started with an O, and here we have it. These two pieces are bearing holders for a five by eight millimeter bearing that is going to go and support the axle that you're going to trim in the transmission. There is an additional part that you will need with this, this suspension, and this is the Ampro rear uh, chassis brace and wing mount. This is a part that I've been making for many, many years, so it's available. Now, despite the fact that this entire rear suspension set is brand new, all of my wing mounts have always had these rear holes. I had no idea what they were gonna be used for, but you'll notice that I put holes in random places, so that's what they're for. Same here, you have these little pegs that have always been there. Uh, this newer model they've reversed so originally i had the peg on the inside and the hole on the outside if you happen to have the earlier model you can still use it you just put a dowel pin in and you're you're all set there's also a heavy duty version of this where there is no hole here and these are a bit beefier if you are one of those people who is a bit more aggressive uh, with their car the first thing we'll do is modify the transmission that's going to be the the biggest thing and from there on we can go ahead and put the remainder of the assembly together we are going to get a pen, and I'm actually pulling out of the drawer here. This is just a silver Sharpie paint pen, but if you've got uh, any color paint pen, that should do. What I want to do is very, you know, very carefully kind of trace a line along this tube that is on the same plane as this boss for the rear shock mount. It doesn't have to be that accurate, but take your time and try and get it Kind of seeing what I'm doing right there, right? That's basically it. So we're just gonna go around this like so. Now this doesn't actually come into contact with the transmission. Okay, and there we have it. But it's still nice to have it uh, kind of tidy. You, want, you don't want it to look too hacked. So there is my silver band. I'm gonna run my Dremel completely around this. I have a a bit here that is serrated. And what this, oh, well you can see that, there you go. What this serrated bit does is instead of melting the plastic, it actually cuts it. There are uh, pr probably better ways to do this. Um, one of my ideas was actually to use a hacksaw and use this boss as a guide and basically just slide it back and forth like so. You're welcome to do that. I simply don't have one here. So again, there's many ways to cut this tube off, but the most important thing to remember when doing this, are your safety glasses, okay? You only have one set of eyes, so you might as well hang on to them. I will cut a bit of this on camera, but it's simply too dangerous to uh, do the entire thing. So let me just uh, kind of align this where I can see it.
you will find that this axle tube is quite thick. So please take your time and make the necessary cut. You can always come back later with the file and clean it up. But again, take your time, be very careful because this can be dangerous. Please note that it's very important that you don't damage this boss because this is a critical mounting feature. So if you damage it, it could compromise the integrity of the transmission. Really just be careful and only cut this part. I'm gonna finish this up off camera and I'll be back. After a little bit of patience, you can see that I've got this tube cut off. It's a, it's a relatively neat cut. You can see that this boss is not damaged and here is the tube. What I wanna do now is actually clean up this area a little bit because we are going to fit a sleeve in here and all that flash is gonna get in the way. I've got an X-Acto knife. Uh, one of the few things more dangerous than a Dremel tool is an X-Acto knife, so please exercise caution because one of these can go right through your flesh to your bone with very, very minimal force. So please be careful when doing this. And I'm just going to just kind of ride it along the inside wall here on that edge. And it's very, very uh, easily going to clean up. You can see I have a nice, nice round hole there. And again, I'm gonna do a little bit to the outside as well, just to kind of tidy this up. It's really always the best if you uh, apply uh, if you're applying some force to this, to apply force backwards. In the event you apply force and it's not moving and then it slips and it flings out, if you're doing that toward you, it's possible it could stab yourself in the uh, in the thumb or, or worse. So again, please be very careful. Well, with that said, I've got this thing, I think, pretty darn clean. I do also own one of these flat bit um, blades for the X-Acto knife. And I really like these because these can very easily tidy up flat surfaces and again, push away from you, not toward you. We will come back a little bit later on, but in the meantime, we're all set. Let's begin the transmission assembly, and the first thing we're going to need is this bearing adapter right here. I'm gonna take this and just kinda clean out these edges. Typical 3D printing prep here. We wanna make sure that the sharp edges are going to be completely clear. The bearing that you're going to install here is a five by eight bearing, common in uh, almost all Tamiyas. This is the small bearing for the counter gear. So it's that little tiny one. So press that right into place. I will use just a dab of super glue on the inside surfaces here. Just like that. And slip it straight in. You do wanna push your axle through just, oops, just to make sure that the alignment is true. Let's get that straight in, oops, stay there. Let that glue harden. And now that the bearing retainers have been installed and glued, it's now going to be time to cut our axles. This part is very, very important. We are going, so let's, let's just kind of focus on the, uh, the left side first. We'll put our bevel gear on, and you must do this because this will alter the length of the shaft. Put the bevel gear on, put the little spacer on, slide this straight. Let's take the counter off, we don't need that. Slide this straight in. And you must make sure that you put pressure on this because you don't want it to slide down. Make sure it's fully seated like that. And then we're going to mark this. What's important to note is the distance uh, of the set screw on the drive cup. So let's measure that real fast. Center of the drive cup, a set screw at the back of the drive cup is about three millimeters. I wanna get a little more by it. Let's call it five and a half millimeters. Give it a half a millimeter of play in here because you don't want to make it too tight. So I'm going to go just over six millimeters like that. It is equally as important that you do it to the right side, even though they should technically be the same length. It's possible that there's some variance in here uh, between the axle that you cut and the spacer that you installed. So you just go ahead and measure that again. I use the sharp tip of the spudger to put a little score in it. And it's always a better idea to err on the side of too much material. So if I would cut it to about six and a half millimeters, just in case, because you can always shave it back a little more. If you cut it and it turns out to be 5.5, it's too short. Let's go ahead and cut these. I will be using a fiber reinforced wheel on my Dremel tool, but you are welcome to use a hacksaw. Either way, please, safety glasses are absolutely critical. Some of these cutting wheels for the Dremel tool are not reinforced. So if these shatter, they'll go flying all over the place. So this is incredibly dangerous. So it's very important that you have some supervision. If you're a youngster or if you are an adult, uh, please make sure that you're doing this very, very carefully because this is highly dangerous. 
You see some flash at the end of this, so I very much recommend getting a file and just kind of smoothing that out a bit. So it's always a good idea to put a little flat spot on the edge of this, and that's simply so that the drive cup has a nice place for the grub screw to sit on right there. Otherwise, you have to really torque it down, and it's very likely that it'll just spin around that axle uh, in the event of a, a harder landing, and that'll just loosen everything up. So again, we'll take this file right here, and just spend a little bit of time putting in a little indentation here. It doesn't have to be very deep, just a very, very small flat spot, uh, about three millimeters of this length here, just so that the grub screw can sit on it. We have finally finished with all of the chopping. This is the left side of the transmission, and I'm going to install the counter gear. So here is the left side axle shaft. Make sure you keep them separate if they were, in fact, slightly different lengths. Let's put the left side shaft in. And there we go, pokes right through. There's my little flat for the drive cup. The drive cup is from a Tamiya King hauler. Part number is up right now. Four came in the package, but you will only need two. I put a, just a dab of thread lock on here because I simply didn't want it to back itself out. Metal to metal typically likes to do that. Let's install that there and just get this started. The reason I'm doing this now is I want to eliminate as much axial movement as possible. So I've got about, about a quarter to a half a millimeter of play and that's what you want. You want to make sure that there's a little bit of slop in here so that nothing binds. So let's just seat this. The right side is complete and we'll finish the left. The right side also we've got, you know, between a quarter and a half a millimeter of play and that's perfect. At this point here, you are now welcome to finish up the differential and install the, or just combine the two halves of the transmission. Complete Superfly 2's entire transmission. This is kind of a big deal right now because I've never done this before. And although I had it mocked up in CAD, this is the first time I've seen it. Hopefully I've done it correctly. The last bit of work we're going to do is trim away a little bit of the edge of this top rib. I'm only going to use some side cutters over here. I'm just going to cut away about two millimeters of it because it will come into contact with a bit of the transmission brace. Let's move on. This is the part of the project where everything gets real. We'll begin with the right side arm. What I want you to make sure is that these are clean because the pivot point will be this lower mount here so we'll take our 3.1 millimeter drill bit and bore that out the arm will pivot in this orientation here so since we're going to use a screw pin here and a screw pin here you'll see in a minute you'll see what i'm talking about these will be fixed so this must be cleaned while we're here we also want to make sure that these are cleared out these are cleared out and the usual, the lower part of the hub carrier has to be cleaned out. It basically, as we always do, make sure everything's nice and tidy. I wanted to point out one thing as well. There's a little hole here, and this is for the Nerf bar, but there's this random dot. This is for an aftermarket, or aftermarket, hilarious. This is for an optional sway bar. The sway bar is nothing more than a piece of piano wire. If you want to run a sway bar, just drill that out. Everything has been prepped and we are ready to install the transmission. Moment of truth. We are going to slot, there's a little hole back, well, big hole back here. That will go into that arm right there. That's usually the pivot for the, for the transmission. So we'll just hold that in place there. And the other one will go right here. Take a 12 millimeter long self-tapping screw and go ahead and Thread it into both of these mounts here, and then we'll slide it in. If you are planning on running the Ampro battery door and the Ampro battery retainer, now is a good time to install it because it's going to be quite difficult once this is all installed. It's all got to come back off again. So this would be a good time. You also note that this is just the battery door retainer and not the trans because obviously this trans is fixed. Part number is on the screen right now. At this point, we can slip it into the slots on the back of the Hornet. This should be a pretty, oh, no, there it goes, it's in. Put the screws in here as you normally would. The screws that I'm tapping right now, the holes just need to be cleaned out, but not drilled. 
These holes are 2.5 millimeters and they are perfect for tapping these holes right in. So please do not drill these, just clean them out. Now that we have some clearance, because uh, it'll start to get a little busy around here, I want to install the ball ends, or the ball studs, I should say, for the A-arms, as well as the A-arms. The A-arms are going to be installed by using two of these screw pins, one on this side and one on this side. This was the easiest thing I could do, uh, in, uh, other than uh, requiring you to do some kind of strange manufacturing to make your own rod. So just get a couple of these here. And the overall length of this is 40 millimeters. I would cut these so that the length after the threaded member is no more than 18 millimeters. So that's just right after the threaded part. So 18 millimeters. My screw pins are threaded, but this is going to have a sway bar. So I'm going to run that wire right now. This is a 1.6 millimeter in diameter uh, piece of piano wire. It's actually the same stuff I use on the front of my RC-10. So I'm going to push that through. I'll have it stick out about 80 millimeters per side. I'm not entirely sure of the length yet, so we'll just leave that, that like that. Just note where the A-arm is here and note where the wire is. It's going to be bent to the right uh, so that it goes through the upper or the lower mount. I'm going to use the upper mount. Just remember that the piano wire will protrude so you don't want it to come to contact with the axle but you're looking at about 15 millimeters of length before that happens so you have plenty of room. I will then take this here for the time being and simply bend it like so. Now we don't want to just bend it like that on both sides because you'll end up pinching it and getting it stuck so I'm going to pull it out just slightly and then hold that there while I bend the other one. Here's the sway bar. We just mock it up again and you see we're really close. So I'm going to put a little kink in it right about here so that it goes straight through. So I'll just hold it right here. So that has been bent. We'll just slide it through the arm like so. Do not bother trimming it just yet. Um, I like to use a piece of, you know, just some wire cutters to cut that off or a Dremel just very carefully. The reason I don't want it trimmed just yet is I wanna make sure that as the arm travels up and down that it has enough, uh, enough clearance. Since I've, I've chosen to use the top hole for the sway bar, what I wanna do is um, the hole is a little bit snug for it right now. The sway bar goes through, but it would help if it had a little more clearance. I will just clean the hole out because right now it's, it's, it is it's specced at two millimeters, but it's just full of uh, some, uh, leftover 3D print, so I'll just clean this out. Okay, You do want to make sure that in this case this is actually kind of loose. And on the opposite side we'll drill out the upper one as well. Those of you familiar with Superfly's build, or really any of my suspension components, will be aware that all of the uh, mating interfaces require a washer. So we'll slide the screw pin in a bit we'll get our washer. This is an M3 washer that is half a millimeter in thickness. Goes in like so. And we'll just push that in. Same on the front side, or I should say on the rear side. That washer in right there. Awesome. There it is. Let's go ahead and thread these in place now. Okay, and that's done. And the rear. The next step is cleaning out, oops, cleaning out these guys here. It was very important that the inside edge here is sharp. We do not want to have some uh, extra goodies in here. There's a little design feature that I've added that will help ensure that this is going to be very, very clean. So again, do it to both sides. Now that they are clean, we'll just go ahead and push the bearings in there one in there and of course corresponding ones on the inside. Remember to clean out both sides here. Okay. It's also very very important that you seat these bearings all the way in there. If these are not seated properly it's highly likely that your axle is going to bind. This is all ready to go. Let's install it. The important bit to know here is that the 1.5 should point to the back of the car. So there is a left and a right, but that's just because they both say 1.5 on their corresponding sides. 
This means that the it will have 1.5 degrees of toe toward the front of the vehicle. That will go right here. Just like before, we will need screw pins and washers. So we'll put the washer on the inside over here. Cool. That's in. And then the last one goes in. And there it is. Thread that into place. All done. Next, the ball studs will go in. It's very important that the ball stud goes on the front side. If you put it on the rear, it will come into contact with the shock, regardless of what shock you use. It simply will. The uh, geometry is not designed to work that way. These are 10 millimeter long threaded ball studs. They are metric, so the diameter of the ball is 4.8 millimeters. If you use a standard one, just make sure that you have to use standard ball cups as well. I'm going to use these pink ones because they're awesome. With our arm on, you want to go ahead and put the, the uh, ball ends and turnbuckle in. This is 50 millimeters center to center, but I shortened it slightly because I wanted a little bit of negative camber. The ball end and the uh, the threaded rod in the middle are going to be what determines the length of each one of these components. So it's hard for me to tell you how long this rod is if I don't know how long the ball ends are. I like to just buy a threaded rod and just cut it to length. Not really a big fan of turnbuckles because they can get significantly more expensive and then you also have to spec them out. And if there's not a hobby shop close by, it can be difficult. So before we put this on, let's not forget our axle. We're probably trying to figure out what this axle is from. Well, this is for a Tamiya DF03RA and TA04. I picked this up from Yao Racing. These were like $7. So they're super cheap, really easy to come across. And, and that was one of the determining factors. Another one was the length of the uh, shaft over here. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that in the bearing and slip the dog bone in the drive cup. So we'll slide this in and then put it in the drive cup. Sorry, I got my hand in the way there. You do want to make sure that you don't have too much negative camber because it will come into contact with the drive cup and that's going to prematurely wear both of them. So we'll just snap that on and snap that on. And let me do the other side. You'll note that I put the roll pin and the hex output on both of the shafts. And just note that usually with Tamiya kits, you're required to put an O-ring inside of the drive cup here to prevent the dog bone from coming into contact with it. And that is no different here. You notice I didn't do that. And that was because I actually shimmed the outside. So that wasn't necessary, but I would go ahead and just put an O-ring in here. If you don't have any five millimeter shims, again, just to prevent any kind of damage with the with the uh, drive shaft uh, moving axially here. Uh, it should be very minimal as I did design it to have clearance, but just note that uh, there can be some manufacturing differences between the drive shafts, the 3D printed plastics, the, the injection molded plastics, the, I mean, really everything. This is nothing more than a tolerance stack up nightmare. The next thing we're gonna do is install the wing mount here. So let's put that in. Usually we just use the M3 screws that came with this. I believe that is an M3 by 16 millimeters. I am going to use this June Falk Hornet shock brace. I'm a massive fan of these. I actually probably bought 20 of these when they were on sale for like three or $4 each. So all of my Hornets have these and that is what I'm going to use here. Wing mount installed. And again, this is completely unnecessary. You can use all the stock hardware. I just really like those. So we'll pop that in and you can see that it all lines up quite tidy. Screw there, screw there, screw here and here. Uh, we'll come to these four a little bit later. Sc two screws through there and one on each side. So let's pick those out. In these two top holes, put a 12 millimeter long self-tapping screw. And again, you must clean these out because these holes are just barely deep enough for these to thread in. If they're not clear, they're, uh, they're gonna bottom out early and potentially strip. So the way I like to do this is since this is kind of a thin piece of plastic here, I don't just thread in, I thread in and kind of wiggle it back and forth a bit. This nicely cuts the nylon so that it will uh, reduce any kind of tension on it and make it nice and sturdy. So just back and forth a little bit. And when it stops, just that's it. Don't add any additional tension. You don't want to strip it. 
these guys here, you will also want to use a 12 millimeter self-tapping screw. And as before, just thread it in there until it snugs up and you're all set. The two that go on the side, also 12 millimeters. Since these Tamiya 12 millimeter self-tapping screws are so readily available, I try and design things wherever I possibly can, sorry, I'm blocking the camera, uh, to take advantage of that. So almost everything that I I make is designed for these 12 millimeter screws. The other shorter, like the eight millimeters and the 16 millimeter ones are usually kind of rare. For the final screws here, the former shock mount for the original wing mount, we want to use an eight millimeter self-tapping screw. And we also want to make sure we put a washer there. The low will get distributed a little more evenly across this bracket. And with that, we have completed the bulk of the rear suspension installation. So we've got both of our arm mounts, both of our arms, our hub carriers, our shock tower, which integrates into the stock rear wing mount from Ampro. Now what you've got is an entire rear bulkhead that is absolutely just, I'm sorry, I know you can't see what I'm doing. It's just, it's hard as steel. This thing is so rigid because it encapsulates the transmission. It turns the transmission into a load bearing entity and also distributes that load through all of the points on the chassis that would uh, normally be absorbing that impact. So it's not just the transmission, it actually goes straight to the chassis. So this is gonna be very, very durable. I think at this point here, we deserve some shock absorbers. The shock absorbers for the rear are the same as the ones for the fronts. These are HSP 85 millimeter, and that's eye to eye ish. They they kind of vary between eye to eye and top to top. It's the 85 millimeter variant, just like the fronts. We will have to install the Ampro uh, eyelets on this because we have a 2.5 millimeter shaft, and we need a and we need it to fit over a three millimeter screw that goes through a four millimeter sleeve. So to do to install these, you just take off the stock ones and thread these back on. There are three variants of this that I sell, and these happen to be the 16.5 millimeter versions. There's a link in the description. Let's go ahead and install these here. So I will take a eight millimeter long screw, and you're going to need the Tamiya little U adapter for shock absorbers. If you have a Tamiya, you have seen these all over the place. On the Hornet, you would find them on the front suspension arms. They are seldom available by themselves. Like the occasional eBay seller will sell them for like $6 each, but you can find them in screw bags with many other useful bits for around $6 each. The upper shock mount consists of a 20 millimeter long machine threaded M3 with a washer, one of these Tamiya brass uh, spacers, they are six millimeters long. Another washer through the hole, another washer and a lock nut. You can see that maybe a uh, 18 millimeter M3 would have been long enough. And the reason why I do the washer, spacer washer, is so that when you tighten this up, the spacer doesn't dig into the shock tower. I like using lock nuts because I don't have to torque the heck out of it for fear that they're gonna back out since uh, lock nuts you know, obviously help lock it in place. On the bottom part of the shock, I've used a 16 millimeter long M3 machine screw. And like the top, I've also got one of those Tamiya brass sleeves in here. So in this case, you get the screw that goes through the spring mount, through the brass sleeve, and on the outside over here, I do have a lock nut. It's very important to note is that I could have reversed this, but the lock nut gets kind of close to the axle. More importantly, if the screw protrudes more than a millimeter or two millimeters, it will come into contact with the axle. So make sure that you put it in this orientation to prevent any kind of binding. With that, we've completed the rear suspension installation. So let's just go ahead and take a bit of a gander over here. We can see that we have a considerable amount of travel. Very nice. I hope you enjoyed that installation. I know it's been kind of involved and complex. So if you are serious about your Hornet and you think that Superfly over here deserves yet another sibling, well, this might be a good path for you. The next episode, you're gonna find that the car will have its complete electronics installed. And the reason for that is we will be installing its roll cage. 
Now this roll cage is not for cosmetics. This roll cage is fully operational and will reinforce the chassis in a number of ways that we will talk about later. And the reason that the electronics will be installed ahead of time is because this is not a fun space to work in when you have to put the electronics in afterwards. Uh, Superfly has got the exact same setup over here. So you can see that things are already a little bit snug in there. The parts list for everything that you saw in this video is in the description. So please check that out to see what you would need in order to build a Superfly with the Omega rear suspension. Now we are not done yet. The rear suspension is going to need rims. I have developed a set of wheels for the car that look to me a little more uh, vintage, a little more accurate, but I do want to try out some more uh, run-of-the-mill rims since these are a bit pricey and you can get a set of hex drive rear wheels for very, very little money. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned to the next one. This, is, this project is going more and more awesome the further we go. Leave a comment. I'm always excited to see what you guys think about these designs. And add me on Instagram and Facebook at Ampro Engineering. And before you take off, please check out the band Blue Pinto. They are the ones that allow me to use their songs on my videos. And a link to their Facebook page is in the credits. Again, thank you so much. And I'm glad you've been with me on uh, this build so far of Superfly 2.